Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to compare and evaluate some of the different terrain textures uh, from A and K, or AK, and uh, also this earth texture from Vallejo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply them uh, to these different models here. These are all the same model, so that should eliminate any confusion. This one here is desert sand. This one is also desert sand. So this is a, a true comparison between Vallejo and AK. The other ones, I just want to see what they look like. And I'll show you what they look like on the screen. But to get started, what we're going to do is I'm going to use some Bastion Gray on these bases as a base coat, as an underlayment. Because uh, this, because the D&D &D bases are very shiny and uh, black. And I didn't want to spray prime I wanted to give something that the um, texture would be able to grip onto and also make it a little bit more neutral because black is pretty harsh when it comes to colors. I could have left it black and then we could have seen what kind of coverage the uh, various textures have but we're going to start it off with gray. Okay, now let me do all these models, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the paint on these guys are dry, and so what we're going to do is we're going to test out each and every one of these on these models. What I did was I grabbed a couple of my wood popsicle sticks to uh, use as an applicator, uh, and you can use anything to applic. You can use paintbrushes. You can use sticks. You can use your finger. You can use whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the Vallejo Earth Texture Desert Sand. I was expecting this. Comes off really easy, and it is very. Um, liquidy or I don't know what you would call that soft I'm getting it all over my fingers okay that's why I got a paper towel here I have not ever used this before so this is a new experience for me as well. And that's what uh, this video is really a learning experience for me. I'm testing uh, the, the compound. Okay, so uh, I probably should use a brush. This is so soft. And I'm going to need to get it into small places. I'm going to use a brush. Now, I have some nylon brushes that I normally use to apply uh, texture and stuff like that to bases. And so that's what this is going to be. Barely touching it. Okay. Uh, it, it is gritty. It's got like a grit to it. Um, which is good. I guess when it's dry, it's going to look like this druid or whatever she is or he is, is going to be uh, standing on sand. Yeah, I wanted to use the brush so I could get it down uh, around the
the feet without actually getting it up all over the feet. I don't mind getting it like a little bit on the feet, of course, because, you know, they're in the desert. But I didn't want to make it cover the feet. And with that wood applicator, it would have been bad. Okay, I'm barely using any. It's almost like paint, you know, and it doesn't have to be thick to really give you that desert sand look. That's, Vallejo did a good job on this one, I'm going to have to say. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like when it dries, but I plan to put just a little bit of a, texture in the front just uh actually it goes all around i'm i'm trying to do some wadis or you know just little little okay ridges or whatever you'd like to call it okay this is what it says it says a sand colored gritty paste it is gritty i'll have to say that for grounds of beaches and deserts, this texture can be mixed with other products in the range and combined with sand and gravel as well, as with model air and game air, and dries in approximately 30 to 45 minutes and can be further painted or used as base for additional effects. Tools can be cleaned with water. Well, that's good because I'm going to clean them with water. Okay. So that first earth texture looks pretty... Okay, you can't really see that, can you? Looks pretty good. We're going to let that dry, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to compare it directly with this A and K. Brush cleaned off pretty good. Okay. Oh, wait. This doesn't want to open. What is that? It's a child-proof seal on it, it looks like. <laughs> is that something i got to break? Oh, maybe it is. Okay, well, that's, that's broke. And it's got one of these. Okay, it's coming apart. Okay, this one looks a little bit more liquidy. But I'm very pleased with both of them so far. I didn't realize how liquidy it was going to be, how, how paint-like... It was going to be okay this one has a fairly gritty texture as well uh, but it seems to be a little bit more liquidy I don't know if I'm supposed to mix that up or probably not let's give it a shot Okay, the A and K, I think, has a little bit more grit to it. I could be mistaken. It could just be the liquidy nature of it. But uh, when it dries, we'll see what it looks like. The color is almost exactly the same. You 
Yeah, it's got more grit to it. It looks like it's easier to put into, uh, it's easier to put into like patterns in the actual sand. All right. That's 200 milliliters and this is 250. It looks like it's about the same, so I don't know. Okay, what does this say? Desert sand is a fine and smooth texture for any type of desert scene, such as North Africa. Perfect for making dunes. This product can be shaped when wet and sanded once dry. This is a high quality acrylic product on extreme. Acrylic product, texture, diorama. Perfect results in thin or thick layers. It can be diluted with water or an acrylic thinner to improve the flow. Close well to preserve for longer use. A spatula or an old brush for handling. Okay. It didn't say clean with water, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, that's super interesting. Um, those two are very similar. This one is probably a little thicker. This is a little wetter, but this has more grit, it seems like. I guess as it dries, it would be better to mold that way. Um, but it looks like I've got a bunch of texture on both of these. And we'll compare up close once they dry in about 30 minutes. Okay, so... The A and K have this seal you have to break. Okay, dark earth. Okay, let's see how what they say about it. Dark earth is the perfect product for re recreating rich dark shades of earth on dioramas or vignettes where a thick and dense texture is desired. This is a high quality acrylic product developed in extreme realism. Acrylic product for textures and dioramas, perfect results, thin, thick, water, thinner, clean. Okay, all the exact same things. Okay. Let's open it up. Let's. This has a little peel tab that I now noticed after I was cleaning that one off. And that's another thing. I probably don't have to peel that all the way off. I could probably leave it halfway and then go to and then use it to seal it on. Oh, that is that is kind of dark. And I'm putting it on top of a gray uh they're all on top of a gray base. Oh, that is thick. Does that say thick? No, it just says dark earth. But, well, I did grab it off of this, and that might be why it's so thick. Let's let's go down here. Um, expect it to get on your fingers. But luckily, it just cleans off with water. Oh, this is awesome. And if you were wondering, I picked this up at Hobby Link. Hobby Link is a model railroading and diorama store where you can buy glue and wood and plastic sh sheets and decals and all kinds of stuff for model kits and dioramas and train sets and stuff like that. And, okay. That looks good. Now, to be honest with you, normally, what, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe this will work really good like that. Uh, what I plan to do 
uh, is use this on some of my Napoleonic models and then uh, maybe put some patches of grass on there or some tufts or stuff like that okay so these guys are done I'm, I'm excited to get to the snow okay muddy ground uh, my understanding is like these will dry pretty flat but this uh, will dry like glossy because uh, it'll be like muddy so if you are going to like dull coat your models be sure to do that before you put this on there that's my understanding because this is specifically made not to be flat uh, but let me let me let me double check that muddy ground is the perfect product for recreating heavy thick muddy surface rich in texture allow 24 hours to completely dry Prior to drawing, wheel and track marks, or whatever you wish, can be pressed into the surface. This is a high quality acrylic product, blah, 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 difficult water. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, we are not going to wait 24 hours for this to dry. Oh, that's extremely wet. Guess what? It's supposed to be. Okay, this has got kind of a... Hmm. I have a Vallejo thick earth, thick mud or something like that. And it has like grass mixed in with it and stuff like this. This doesn't. But it is... I don't know, it kind of reminds me of that, but uh, color-wise, I guess we'll see. Yeah, it's going on about the same. Oh, it's got chunks in it. It's got thick chunks. I'm sorry, I'm doing this off camera, aren't I? Can you see those chunks in there? Boy, this is going to help me base my models. I think it's going to save a lot of time, too. Because in the past, I would put Elmer's glue down, and then I would put grit on top of the Elmer's glue, and then you got to paint the grit, and then you got to highlight the grit I'm gonna leave it chunky in the back there just so that it just so we can see what it looks like or this is gonna save a couple of steps or at least that's what I'm hoping right All right, now this one, ooh, this is like lightweight. This has no weight to it. Compared to these, these actually have like, yeah, this is like heavy, where this is like super light. Okay, let's see what it says. The perfect product for create snow texture or any surface terrain vehicle or building. This is high quality acrylic product. Okay. Can be diluted with water. Okay. So it says basically the same thing on all of them. The peel back switch back. Now let's see what it does. Oh. Okay. Some uh, some cool whip looking stuff. Okay. All right. 
let's see what this snow has to offer. It is very much like a whipped, cr not whipped cream, like a, like a Cool Whip dessert topping. That's kind of the texture it's got. Um, I struggle with snow. I've um, I've used the Woodland Scenics snow before on um, on like terrain tables and stuff, and it just never covers. You can it just doesn't look right. Um, hopefully, this and already it's looking a lot like snow. Whoa, maybe that's a little bit too much. Okay, it's all right. Um, pushing it up against the boot instead of trying to brush it up to the boot. Okay. In this case, painting uh, the base, instead of gray, painting it white might have been preferable, right? Because it would look really good that way. Okay, I deliberately put like a little extra in the front. Put a little on the shoulders and the head just to, probably shouldn't have, but that's okay. All right. That is the snow. All right. So uh, through the miracle of movie magic, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry uh, for about 30, maybe an hour, and then I'm going to come back. We're going to review it, but for you, it'll only be seconds. All right, I'll see you in just a minute. All right, guys, uh, our figures should be dry or fairly close to being dry because it's been about 30, 45 minutes, something like that. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the texture and things like that. Now, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Okay, we're going to start with our Vallejo Desert Sand. Yeah, it's pretty stiff. It's still a little wet, it looks like. I'm seeing a little bit of a shine to it, just a bit. But you can see how gritty it is. I don't know. Maybe I can get closer. All right, let's take a look here. Um, ooh, which way am I going? All right. You can see the grit uh, in the sand. That's the Vallejo. Uh, some of it is still wet, it looks like, right there at the front of that toe. But... Uh, Mostly it's dry. Uh, it does have a little bit of a, a texture to it. It looks really good, I think. Uh, let's pull up the AK Desert Sand. That's this one here. 
side by side. AK looks like it dried a little thinner, doesn't it? Um, almost like I needed to paint the base a little yellow because uh, the gray is coming through. But it's still a good texture. Um, this one looks a little bit more, uh, the Vallejo looks a little bit more gritty than the AK. This is the AK over here. But they're almost identical. Almost, they're, they're, I would say they're pretty much identical. Okay, so now this is the Dark Earth. Uh, it definitely is Dark Earth. I would say, what is that, Burnt Umber or something? It's extremely dark. Uh, dark dirt, you know? A uh, little bit of grass on there. You know, in splotches or maybe some tufts. Oh man, that's 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 hard. That's rigid. Okay. Yeah, and it's only been about 30, 45 minutes. No real gray shining through. I think that's pretty good. Now this is the mud that recommends that you let it dry for 24 hours which is weird, but uh, it, looking at it with the naked eye, uh, it looks a little lighter than this one, uh, but that might be because of the shine. They're almost identical, right? This one has a lot of grit. This one had some texture. Yep, the muddy ground and the dark earth are almost the same. Uh, I am looking forward to getting medium earth or light earth uh, eventually. Okay, now this is the snow. This is the one I was really looking forward to. Uh, That looks good. That definitely looks like snow. Doesn't that look a little bit like a snowdrift? Yeah, it's pretty stiff. It's got a little bit of flexibility, but I guess that's because it's not fully dry yet. But if I saw that there was some peaks on there, I could go in with my finger and push those peaks down to get rid of any uh, harsh or, or sharp edges. Okay, I'm trying to scrape that off. Okay, it's actually coming off. What about that right there? That looks like snow to me. That looks really good. What about on, on the jacket? Yeah, I put some snow up there just to see what it would look like. That looks pretty good. I'm okay with that. That'll look really good on buildings or on dioramas. And I think this will go a long ways, any of these, because I barely touched it to cover these bases. I look forward to doing whole units, uh, maybe some winter, maybe some winter uniforms uh, like this, uh, maybe some desert uniforms like the Africa Corps or Eighth Army. That's why I got these so that I could do some Africa Corps with some actual desert uh, sand looking stuff. I, I used real sand, but real sand is too big for a 28 millimeter model. So it makes it look like they're walking around on these giant rocks of sand. 
Uh, this looks a lot better because sand at this scale would be a lot finer. All right, guys, well, tell me what you think about these terrains. Do you use them? And, uh, terrain. Uh, and th I think that these are going to speed up my um, flocking process because now I'm going to do this and then just put some grass or tufts instead of Elmer's gravel. And then uh, uh, paint the grit and then go in to do the foliage. And plus, if I ever decide to do any, uh, not dioramas, but like uh, bespoke terrain pieces, like town sectors and stuff like that, I think these will come in, come in useful. I want to get the, uh, a lighter earth. This is too dark, in my opinion. I need something between these two, uh, like a like a khaki color or a, uh, a mid-brown. You know, that's what I'm looking for. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and checking out this video. Make sure you check out all my other terrain modeling uh, tutorials and painting videos and things like that. And I will catch you in the next one.